Howdy! I'm known as Dimwit, the last mountain man, feared throughout the land. And today we're going to talk about Smith & Wesson tip-up revolvers. And I have six of them here in front of me. Let me show you real quick. Like that. And, uh... I'm going to show them to you, every one of them, and we're going to shoot uh, three of them. And uh, well, don't we just uh, start? Um, let's begin with the 22s. They're all 22 short, and this is the oldest one. Um, and uh, this is uh, model number one, first issue, six type. And uh, this is made from 1857 to 1860. So this could have been a backup gun for a soldier during the American Civil War. And uh, these are a little bit different than the later ones because they have this rounded frame and they have this uh, hammer that uh, is kind of a two-piece hammer. And... Uh, they're hard to find, they're expensive, and they're usually worn. Um, you open them like this, that's why they're called tip up. And then you take the cylinder out, and then you use this thing to push the spent casings out so that's how they work and this one is it uh, doesn't have any uh, looseness in the joint here no rattle of play uh, and that's uh, rare and uh, it's all functional pretty tight so um, it's in pretty good uh, shape for being one of these early ones. Only thing I can think of is that screw uh, that holds uh, the two separate pieces of the hammer together. That screw is a little loose. The threads are a little uh, buggered. So uh, that's the oldest one. And then... Um, there's this one. This is the model number one, second issue, and they were made from 1860 to 1868. And I think maybe this is the prettiest one I ever saw. And uh, the frame, uh, like that first one, is actually brass, but uh, it's silver plated. And usually, that silver plating is all gone. So uh, this uh, gun is almost like new. And you can see that silver is getting uh, kind of black in places. And uh, when you have an old gun like that, don't get your silver polish out and, uh, and do anything with it, because yeah, it's supposed to be like that. So really nice condition looks good uh, it's perfect mechanical condition and, uh, and then we have the uh, model number one third issue and they were made from 1868 all the way up to 1881 and uh, this one is loaded so we're going to shoot this thing in a minute and um, this is the one that's probably seen the most use uh, of the, all the six uh, revolvers I have here. But it's not, it's, uh, it, it works like it should. It's fairly tight. Uh, and, um, it, and it's a blued steel version. Um, a lot of these were nickel plated. I don't care much about nickel plating. Uh, 
So why don't we shoot it? And these are 22 shorts and they're black powder and that's important because um, you can actually wreck one of these with uh, modern 22 short ammo. So, but you can't buy, uh, you can't buy 22 short uh, black powder ammo. So I yanked the bullets out and replaced the powder with 3F black powder and put the bullets back in. So we'll see how that works. Sounds easy, isn't it? Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> we'll see how it works. Do you have a kind of a close up? <clears throat> well, it was loud enough and uh, some muscle flare and all uh, and the smoke and the smell and everything a growing boy needs. Try it once more. Can't remember how many times we fired it, but uh, there's uh, seven shots in these, so it's not a six shooter. It's a seven shooter. Okay. Ooh, that didn't sound too good. Let's see. I'm not sure what happened there, but um, <coughs> the bullet didn't make it out, so we're gonna not fire that last one. So, uh, but uh, I wish uh, some of the ammo factories would uh, make 22 short. Uh, black powder because there's a lot of these little revolvers out there and people like to try them and and they do with the modern stuff and they wreck them and it's kind of hard to believe that a little cartridge like that can ruin a gun but uh, they're not very strong really but they're they're like a swiss watch it's incredible precision made uh, but the parts are small and, and things like that and and uh, and when you think about it, uh, from my experience with um, modern reloading and also mus uh, black powder muscle loading, it's easier to get in trouble with too high a pressure with uh, the smaller caliber stuff than the larger caliber. So um, do have some respect for the 22 short. Okay, so that was the 22. Uh, uh, let's um, move over to the um, 32 caliber. And uh, this is the uh, model number two, Old Army is what they usually call them nowadays. And, and um, they started making these in 1861 uh, all the way until 1874. A lot of famous people had these, and a lot of soldiers carried them as a backup during the Civil War. They had to buy them for their own money, but, uh, you know, it's a pretty handy gun. Uh, and compared to a percussion revolver, it was uh, extremely modern and efficient at, at that time. And... Um, uh, and this uh, one is... Uh, Really nice. Uh, not as nice as that uh, second one I showed you, but uh, these are hard to find in nice condition because uh, some of these 22s, they kind of live their life in uh, 
uh, in a drawer of a desk or something. But uh, if you bought one of these, you had some use for it. So uh, they rarely survive in uh, this kind of condition. So, um, and then moving on, we have the model one and a half, old model. And they made these from 1865 until 1868. Because um, after the Civil War, they felt the need for a 32 caliber revolver, but smaller. So uh, uh, that uh, model number two old army that I just showed you, that's a six shooter. Uh, this is a five shooter. So, um, and uh, they had to come up with a name and they had already, uh, you know, the 22s, they were called number ones and, uh, and, and that uh, well, army it was called number two. So, they, well, we'll call it one and a half, probably because it's kind of in between when it comes to size. So, um, and, and this uh, looks like somebody carried uh, carry it uh, in their pocket quite a bit because there's not much uh, finish uh, left on it. Oh, just a nice uh, patina that uh, I really like. And uh, as you can see this is loaded. I know what that means. And, and um, there's one thing different with uh, this one than compared to all the others, because um, all the others have the a locking mechanism of the cylinder on top here, but this one has got it on, uh, at the bottom. And I'm kind of partial to this one, so this is, maybe this is my favorite. And um, these were meant for the 32 short, rimfire ammo but they will chamber the 32 long and uh, I have 32 long in here um, like these and if you've seen any of my other videos uh, uh, I showed you the, these before they're modern reloadable uh, once uh, use uh, 22 shorts as primers and they hold less powder than the old original ones so I'm gonna try it in th this one and and afterwards I have another gun here with 32 shorts in them so we'll be able to hear and see and feel the difference between the two. So uh, let's shoot it. Um, uh, this gun, like I said, it's been carried a lot, but it's not been used a lot. It's in phenomenal uh, shape. Everything works just like it should, and it's beautiful inside the barrel, inside the cylinder. So it's been carried quite a bit, but not used much. Let's see. Well, that was a bit more authority than uh, 22 short, uh, and um, so given a choice, uh, I think this is what I would carry. Um, so there's four more in here, so let's uh, see. Okay. Last one. And uh, these were loaded with uh, 3F uh, black powder. Um, when, uh, like I said, these modern uh, cartridges hold less powder than your original ones. Uh, 
Uh, but you can buy what we call Swiss powder, and that's a, a fine, a better quality and more expensive black powder, and they have uh, different names uh, than the other ones that use 1F, 2F, 3F. They ha I can't remember the, what they call them, but they have something similar to uh, the 3F, uh, but it's about 15% uh, more efficient, more powerful, so um, you can use that in your cartridge guns to kind of steal back the, that uh, that uh, extra room in the casings that were missing compared to the original ones. Um, Okay, so our uh, last one I have here to show you is, is this one, and uh, this is also a model one and a half, and they call this the new model. And uh, this one is in beautiful shape, uh, but uh, I think uh, it's been uh, refinished, but it's got kind of a satin sheen to it. Uh, I think the original Smith & Wesson bluing was more glossy. Uh, but I think maybe it's got the original finish on the trigger and the hammer at least and uh, and a uh, locking mechanism here and, and this uh, thing to poke out the rounds with and um, I don't know why they did this but it must have never been it must have always been a nice looking gun because there's no sign of any corrosion or and then and the uh, barrel stampings uh, are still very nice. Uh, so it works just like it should. So I have the 32 short in this one and uh, we'll see if we can notice uh, any difference. Well, uh, I shot these in a rifle. I could uh, really tell the difference, but now in uh, in this revolver, I I can hardly tell the difference. Oops, that one had a little less powder in it. Maybe we should have a look. Okay. So, um, open it. Take the cylinder out and we push the casings out like this. Okay. And um, let's talk a little bit about uh, what sort of problems you can expect uh, to find when you're looking for one of these and uh, what you can do about it. Of course this uh, hinge is sort of the weak point so you gotta make sure there's no cracks or repairs and if there's some play in there, this one's got a little bit uh, but it's uh, actually better than most. Uh, what you can do is uh, uh, take that uh, screw out and take take it apart, put the screw back in and tighten the screw carefully and uh, take the screw out and try to fit the barrel back on, see if it's better. Uh, maybe you have to do it a few more times before you get it right. But just go easy and uh, a little bit at a time. And uh, a lot of times uh, it will tighten up. And um, 
these uh, revolvers, they don't have uh, anything that goes all the way through the cylinder. They have this little, this little thing here that goes into the back of the cylinder. And the front of the cylinder has got this uh, little bump pair that, that goes into. Uh, it's got uh, it fits into here, right uh, below the the bore. So uh, and I'm sure that's uh, so it will keep rotating uh, uh, even when there's a lot of black powder following. But um, it's a type of mechanism that will become uh, loose and wobbly. And, uh, but the, that uh, thing that sticks out of uh, the cylinder, that's actually a screw. And um, so you can adjust the tightness of the cylinder. And uh, that will usually uh, do the trick. Uh, but the thing is, uh, that screw... Um, after all these years, that, that thing could be stuck in there really tight. And uh, this one has got, uh, so you, you use a kind of a split screwdriver from this end. Some of the others have uh, an ordinary type uh, screwdriver uh, that you use from the rear end. So they're, they're a little bit different. Um, they're adjustable but sometimes, a lot of times, they, they are stuck. And um, the third thing uh, is this um, latch on top here. And that, uh, and that locks the cylinder um, that fits into these little square holes here and um, there's a spring underneath this latch and in this cavity it fills up with dirt and uh, that spring will quite happily rust to pieces and uh, so what you have to do is to push out uh, uh, one of these pins to take this out, clean it, uh, and maybe replace that spring. It's a real simple spring, it's easy to make. Um, only trouble is uh, these uh, steel pins, uh, they, um, they can really be stuck in there. A lot of times they will come right out, uh, but I come across one that was uh, it was stuck in there so bad I was worried I might uh, ruin the gun while taking it apart so um, uh, those are the three things that I have come across uh, problems with these little guns and um, and uh, worked out uh, but uh, if the mechanism in itself in here is worn out, then it's uh, not much hope because it's uh, really precision made. And uh, so worn out revolver mechanism is generally something I don't, uh, don't really like. So a few little issues is fine, but when the whole thing is worn out, it's a whole hanger. So um, that's it for now. I, I hope you enjoyed my collection of Smith & Wesson tip-up revolvers. Uh, and um, like I said, these are really high quality guns. You rarely see them in this kind of condition as I have here. So. Um, and they're wonderfully made, it's like a Swiss watch. Okay, catch you later.